watching Cold Fusion TV. This year, we're about to see a barrage of new phones like the Samsung Galaxy S5, HTC M8, the successor to the HTC One, the LG G2 Pro, and more. Each and every year, they promise better performance, more software tweaks, and sometimes even just gimmicks. But recently, there's been a shift in personal opinions. People nowadays are more or less happy with the performance on their high-end phones. And now, one of the main things people are asking for is a better battery. And there's good news, it's finally starting to happen. Now, I've touched on battery technology in a previous video. It was about an incredibly smart girl who advanced the state of the art in relation to supercapacitor technology. But the thing is, the widespread consumer production of such a method is still a way off. You can check it out if you want, it's gonna be the first link in the description below. Isha's invention is encouraging to see, but what about a new technology that's being implemented into devices already? Enter Amprius. But before we get to Amprius, let's take a revealing look at the state of the art right now. As I was pondering battery technology, an idea hit me. Would it be possible to accurately measure the progress that smartphone batteries have made? I set to find out. I decided to measure the progress as performance per unit volume. It's pretty simple when it comes down to it. Just calculate each of the battery's volumes and use the milliamp hour and watt hour info on the battery's label as a measure of performance. What I found was pretty shocking but also kind of totally expected at the same time. Looking at the performance per unit volume over the past three to four years, nothing's really happened. Nothing's really increased. Performance has stayed pretty much unchanged since 2010 and even earlier. In other words, throughout the years, all that's really happened is an increase in the battery's physical size. The actual technology is pretty much unchanged. Processor efficiency, and phone display efficiency are pretty much the only hardware aspects that are prolonging your device's battery life. And for comparison's sake, since 2010, mobile GPU power has increased 33-fold, while the battery has stayed exactly the same. So now you've seen physical proof of why we all want better batteries. As I said earlier, there's good news. Amprius may be the ones to change all of this finally. Amprius is a 2008 startup company focusing on battery technologies. Right now, they're producing a new type of long-lasting lithium-ion battery for portable electronics. Let's hear a bit from Amprius' CEO, Kang Sung. Yeah, Amprius is the uh, is the developer of high-energy density lithium-ion batteries. Yeah, so during the last uh, uh, three years, Amprius developed not only silicon uh, anode technology, also uh, developed the electrochemistry and the battery technology around that technology. So what's the big deal? Amprius's batteries use silicon electrodes, which can store more energy than conventional graphite electrodes. The problem was, batteries with silicon electrodes would fall apart over time due to mechanical stresses. But in 2007, an engineering professor from Stanford University managed to fix this problem. His name was Yi Su. Amprius then used this same technology in their batteries to produce a battery product that can hold more charge than conventional batteries. So Amprius uh, lithium-ion battery contains silicon anode as an uh, electron material. So silicon, in theory, silicon has a 10 times higher energy density than carbon. So today our battery can produce 20 to 40 percent more energy density than conventional lithium-ion battery in your smartphone. This is not the first time we've seen a company announce a new type of battery to replace the old aging technology that we have in all of our devices. There's been countless other attempts by companies such as Panasonic and A123. And you may have been thinking, well this Amprius technology sounds great, but it will never get off the ground or see the light of day. Amprius is different from all the other attempts. For one, They've already raised over $30 million. And the second thing, the battery is already in mass production in China. But that's not all. Uh, we're also working with the leading uh, OEM in consumable devices. Uh, at this moment, uh, is, uh, we probably is not convenient to disclose their name, but uh, we are uh, working with them in intensive testing mode. We're making prototypes for, for those applications. So those applications, uh, not only limited to the uh, smartphones, also 
uh, applied to the wearable devices. Now that's pretty interesting. I wonder who the OEM is. I'm not sure if you meant that these batteries are only for the OEM's wearables, or if they were both for the OEM smartphones and wearables. There's only really a couple of leading OEMs that make both smartphones and wearable tech. Of course, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Let me know your interpretation of the quote in the comments section below. If all the testing goes well and according to plan, Amprius's new battery is set to be one of the first major breakthroughs to actually come to market since the lithium-ion battery's introduction by Sony in 1991. So anyway, this is actually pretty big breaking news from February 2014, so we'll have to see how it all turns out. Maybe by 2016 we should start seeing yet another race. It's going to be the next big spec race. We've had pixels, megapixels, CPU power, RAM, screen size, and now it's time for the battery. One can hope. Hey guys, Dagogo here, and that was just a little bit about the state of the art in battery technology today. So I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, don't forget to like and share if you did enjoy it. And speaking of which, thank you to all those people who actually shared that last video, How Big Is Google, it really means a lot, and all your comments were just amazing, so just a big thanks for that. Speaking of release videos, I actually released another music video uh, the other day, which is uh, quite interesting because you can actually see the whole world in under five minutes, so you can check that out if you like. Both of those links will be in the description below, so Free, feel free to check it out if you're keen. Um, and yeah, that's about it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon for the next video. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Cheers. Cold Fusion. It's new thinking.